I have a one, I'm sorry for the sound I look, for the sound and where I look, because I just got out of bed this morning, and I'm actually going to create something here on my channel that no one else has done this year so far, and then it's create the best of the year, because it is actually the first few days of July. And essentially, this is the seventh month of the year, so it's like, for six months, the rest of the six months. And granted, I am now not seeing any film that is released in July, so whatever I see for the rest of the year, this, it will not be in, never, in this best of the video of this year so far. And um, I will not make this list very extensive, like hopefully this won't be more than 15 minutes. And I can't raise my voice because my parents are still sleeping. But with all that instead, here is my 10 best of the films, favorite films of this year so far. Coming in, coming in at my number 10 is a surprise hit of Spy. Spy, I thought was very good. I thought it was very surprising, and I actually really thought Melissa McCarthy was very good in it. Although I really loved the other side characters in the movie, but nevertheless, Melissa Melissa McCarthy Spy really takes it a big surprising. I'm a number 10 spot, even though I do admit the film is not perfect. Number 9, Insidious Chapter 3. The reason why I prefer Insidious over Spy, in my opinion, is because I think it's a bit more surprising. I mean, it's, well, Spy may be more surprising. Insidious has to, more, has to live up towards a bigger degree, and it needs to fall on the, the forefront of the first two movies. The first Insidious, I thought, was great. The second one, while not being a great film overall, it still was fairly good. And I really loved Insidious Chapter 3, in my opinion. I really thought it was surprising. And the way it had to build up towards the other ones, and not just doing that, but wrapping it all up together, for me, was a big, big deal. And I was very pleased in how they finished it. Yeah, there's like spiders, a fair bit of problems, or most of us on this list, there's problems with the film. But. Nevertheless, I was very, very impressed with Spy. I mean, with Insidious Chapter 3, and I was very, very happy with it overall. Number 8, Fast and Furious 7. I really loved this movie. I thought it was high octane action to the highest degree, and everyone just felt super great. And I just thought it felt like a great conclusion to your franchise. Although there has been stated that there will be another one, which for me takes a authenticity and the genuine nature of the, of the ending completely out of it, and for me, kind of ruins it. Granted, the ending, still for itself, is very tear-jerky, and is very emotional on how they say goodbye to Paul Walker. But nevertheless, Fast, Fast and Furious 7, for me, was probably the most fun movie of this year, aside from my number one. And number seven for me is going to be the newest and latest Pixar movie, Inside Out. I loved Inside Out. Inside Out. I thought it was very, I thought it was very unique. That was well, not perfect and definitely not original. It was definitely well done and had its heart and technique in the right place to make it really, really great. And it's definitely Pixar's best film, in my opinion, since Toy Story Three, because. Brave was very disappointing, in my opinion, <laughs> but Inside Out, I thought it was truly and genuinely great movie. I loved every moment of it. Was it perfect? What, am I the biggest fan of it? Maybe not, but you know what? I really will say Inside Out for me really, really did surprise me for what, for what it did. And as a whole, Inside Out was the best animated movie of this year, probably. And yeah, nothing more I can say to that. And number six, for me, is going to be Ex Machina. Ex Machina is a truly spectacular sci-fi movie. And I think it really has some brilliant, ambitious views it has on science fiction as a whole. It has, not, has acknowledgments from 2001 Saucy, The Terminator, The Star Wars, with great... You can even believe on it, like how this robot... This female robot thinks she's human with the idea of her coming across with these other two humans, how she interacts with them, the ambitious ideas, the philosoph 
the philosophical views, the interesting perspectives that they bring them through, the effects are incredible. This, the, the, susp the suspension of disbelief is immense. And of course, the ending is truly to behold. Like if you see this movie, the ending will truly stick with you. And it's truly for me, maybe the best ending of this of any film I've seen this year. And nothing more than I can say then. Ex Machina, you were truly ambitious. It was ambitious, and yet it passed with flying colors, in my opinion. All right, let's get to my top five favorite films of the year. Yes, Ex Machina well, it was great. It may have been perfect, but it did not get in my top five. So here's my top five favorites of this year now. Number five, Paddington. Paddington was a truly beautiful, genuine, heartwarming, beautiful film. And this is from the producers of Harry Potter. So you know their heart, and you, you're going to feel some beautiful, heartwarming scenes and truly wonderful filmmaking here as finest. The CG for Paddington is great. The family dynamic is wonderful. The message is beautiful. And Paddington is just extremely adorable. He really is. A, is a, it's a truly genuine, heartwarming film that I really loved. And for me, it's definitely my favorite uh, family film this year. Yes, I loved Inside Out, but for me, Paddington is even better, in my opinion. I know people would definitely disagree, but I really did love Paddington. It has some it's beautiful messages, it's beautiful CG, and it's just an all-around phenomenal family film for me. And it really does kick through by being this year's best this, um, family film. Number four, Kingsman. Kingsman was just... Kingsman the Secret Service. Kingsman was just awesome. It was awesome. I love this movie. It was so cool. Everyone in this movie, this was extremely impressive to watch. Like Michael uh, Michael Caine was really great in this movie. Sonny R. L. Jackson, you see Mark Hamill in this movie as a cameo. Um, you have Conforth making a truly surprising performance in this movie. You have the main character in this movie played by Taron Egerton. Yeah, a couple of it just remember that. Um, he was incredible. I thought it was very smart. It was very tongue-in-cheek with the messages. and It was almost like a nod to the 60s, 70s James Bond. And I loved how he kept it in this very, very seether, very, very unique, very, very fun acknowledgement. It's very much the 21 Jump Street of spy films. Like it really do, it really knew what it was, and it really took full advantage of that, and I thought it was very clever, for me, at least. And suppressing cast, going fantastic action, and above all things, a truly awesome movie. Just nevertheless, wow, top three now. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, number three for me is going to be seventy one. I really, 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 really loved seventy one. I thought it was. In a, memor a mesmerizing mental t attack on the mind as well as the visual experience of being in this IRA setting of a war. And the whole perspective you see through, uh, mainly through Jack O'Connell's character is truly exceptional. And I found it to be very, very smart, very beautifully shot, incredibly, compe incredibly compelling visually stunning and it just took you on this incredible trip the first shot to the last shot it is like it really grabs you by the throat and it doesn't let you go it's relentless it's not going it is a true war experience that you will not forget in my opinion it's the best war film since the lone survivor and nonetheless to say that 71 was probably for me the most surprising film of the year Number two, Avengers Age of Ultron. I love this movie. It had a big, big standard to live up to the first and second phase of Marvel Cinematic Universe, but not the set. 
had to live up to the first Avengers, but so many people now claim to be one of the best superhero movies of all time. So there's a lot of writing on this, and everything works in my opinion. The cast, the directing by John Sweden, the echoing feel for it, the villain is phenomenal in my opinion. He's definitely the best villain of the year. Ultron, voiced by James Spader, is bone chilling. He's creepy as hell. Hell, he's truly creepy. You know, I just loved every single scene he was in. All these characters really worked off of, were great. And for me, the most surprising role was the, the most surprising role was um, Hawkeye. You know, my favorite character is Thor. Like, it's like for me, Avengers: Age of Ultron was nevertheless fantastic. In an, in an otherwise lacking year of superhero films so far. Yeah. Now, here's my number one. And my number one favorite movie of the year is... A Cop Out. I'm doing a tie. I'm sorry. I can't decide. Um, my number one. And my number one for me is... Mad Max Fury Road and Jurassic World. Let's... I'm, here's what I'm going to say. Mad Max is probably the better technical all-around film, where I am just a huge fan of Jurassic World. I love these films so much and so extensively that I just love them all. I love the cast of both. I love the direction. I love the writing. Uh, Mad Max was very simple. It was very forward. It was very direct. I made it feel very compelling. It was much more like an authentic feeling of a truly action movie rush feel. Give you a lot of excitement and um, surprising a bit of death. I mean, death and depth for what it gives you for just a straightforward action movie. And I really love that. And Jurassic World was very smart, very clever, and I just personally fell in love with the cast. The direction by Colin Trevorrow, the color palette, the, the action, the effects, I loved it all. I'm probably the biggest fan of the Jurassic World, as, um, as all the people I know about who've seen this movie, I'm probably the biggest fan of them. Yeah. Now, nonetheless, I know those two are my favorite movies of the year so far. My Max Fury Road are definitely my favorite movies of the year. My Max Fury Road and Jurassic World. I have two favorite films of this year. Now, thank you for watching everyone, and I will just quickly go through my list, or at least to try to show you my list here. This, uh, okay, you can better make that out. Uh, number, that's number 10 was Spy, number 9 was Insidious Chapter 3, number 8, Fast and Furious 7, number 7, Inside Out, number 6, Ex, Ex Machina, number 5, Paddington, number four, Kingsman, Secret Service, number three, 71, number two, Avengers Age of, Avengers Age of Ultron, and number one, Mad Max, Fury Road, and Jurassic World. That's my list, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed it, and this video will be a truly authentic with, and it will definitely, for me, be a big, a big thank you for all my fans who've been watching so far. Till then, I'll see you in the future for more videos as always. Till then, I'm out.